So today, <clears throat> I want to talk to you about how we avert war and maintain peace. And more than that, how we shape a region that reflects our national interests and our shared regional interests. Those interests lie uh, in a region that operates by rules, standards and norms, where a larger country does not determine the fate of a smaller country, where each country can pursue its own aspirations and its own prosperity. A war over Taiwan would be catastrophic for all. We know that there would be no real winners, and we know maintaining the status quo is comprehensively superior to any alternative. It will be challenging, requiring both reassurance and deterrence. But this is the proposition most capable of averting conflict and enabling the region to live in peace and prosperity. So I'll say it now at the National Press Club to avoid any possible misunderstanding. Our job is to lower the heat on any potential conflict while increasing pressure on others to do the same. And the Albanese government does that here at home and we do that in our diplomacy. It may not sell as many newspapers today, but it will help you to sell them for a lot longer. <laughs> I said at the outset, strategic competition is not merely about who is top dog who is ahead in the race, or who holds strategic primacy in the Indo-Pacific. It is actually about the character of the region. It's about the rules and norms that underpin our security and prosperity, and that ensure our access within an open and inclusive region, and that manage competition responsibly. It's clear to me from my travels throughout the region, countries don't want to live in a closed hierarchical region where the rules are dictated by a single major power to suit its own interests. Instead, we want an open and inclusive region based on agreed rules, where countries of all sizes can choose their own destiny. Some of the framing of this speech by some media outlets today um, sort of framed it as, as a counter-argument to comments that were made by the former Prime Minister Paul Keating at his very <coughs> forum only a month ago. And in that speech, he said, running around the Pacific Islands with a lay around your neck, handing out money is not foreign policy, it's a consular task. And this was, of course, criticism of you by one of your own side. Before we get into a broader discussion, dissecting all of the issues that you raised in your speech today, I was wondering, were you forewarned that Mr Keating was going to be making those comments? And have you spoken to Mr Keating since? Well, um, you can probably work that out for yourself. But uh, what I'd say on the Pacific is the, the importance of the Pacific to Australia the importance of a peaceful, stable region to Australia, I think I laid out in the speech and has been well understood by previous uh, Prime Ministers and governments. But I think on Mr Keating, what I would say is this. I think in tone and substance, he diminished both his legacy and the subject matter. 